Before we start today's show, we want to invite you to stick around at the end of the episode to enjoy a preview of a new podcast that premieres on July 14th. As the industry's exclusive cannabis podcast network, MJ Bulls is proud to present Women Leading in Cannabis. Join host Kira Reed each week for inspirational discussions with women who are leading the cannabis industry. And if you are a great company doing great things, I hope you can be selective. I hope you get to choose who you want on your cap table. And when that day comes and it's not just about money, it's about how this particular investor group allows for me to succeed, encourages my growth, is there for me when times are tough. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today on Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by a former guest and a great friend of the show, Matt Nordgren from the Arcadian Fund. Matt, welcome back to the show. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Glad to be back on with you guys. Well, for those who don't know Matt, he's had a success in a number of different venues from athletics to entertainment to investing. And well, we discussed all that last time you were on the show. So if you want to know more about Matt, take a minute, go back and listen to Raising Cannabis Capital, episode 35, because today... I'd say let's start off by giving everybody like a quick recap. You've been in the cannabis industry for a while and your company is one of the cannabis industry premier venture funds. Matt, tell us about Arcadian's investment thesis. Thanks for asking, Dan. I think our thesis at its core is really to invest in growth rounds of companies. Our specialty is helping join a team that's got enough data and enough traction and revenue being generated to go from a good team to a great team. As a strategy, we've sort of built that in a few ways. Our previous funds sort of focused on A and B rounds and non-plant touching companies. Many of those companies on the servicing side, the B2B side, have grown into be relatively larger companies. And we're starting to notice that the institutionals and the Fortune 500s that also do that type of service are getting closer and closer to entering. So we've launched a second fund, which will focus on the later stage aspect in, in terms of growth. And those types of companies we're really excited about, Dan. Yeah. Um, but we are touching the plant going forward. We do think the B2C side is going to have some outsized returns. We're now in the market with an AB round, sort of early stage growth round, B2C consumer focused vehicle as well. So I'd say we're growth investors, Dan, but our strategies kind of change with the times in terms of what companies are doing and how a market has matured. Well, that's interesting because when you were at the show the first time, institutional investors were don't want to touch the plant, but we're starting to dabble in non-plant touching cannabis deals. So you're seeing this change where institutional investors are starting to warm up to the idea of some plant touching companies. I think that's correct. Looking at it over the years, you've seen them all start to think about it and then they think about it more and then they keep thinking about it. (laughs) I think they're in the final stages of figuring out those pieces. And when you start to ask yourself, why is that the case? Inevitably, I think the question that continues to come up is, why are all these regulations starting to happen? And it's because of the fact that institutionals, large Fortune 500 companies are close to figuring that out. And for them to get into this space, they need to have a few things. One, regulation. Big, big, big companies and institutionals like to know to a higher degree of certainty what they're getting into. The other one is capital flow. You're starting to see things flow in different directions. We didn't get involved in plant touching assets early, partly because of the regulatory risk, but we also felt like they were a little bit overvalued. Not that there wasn't value, but that they were trading at multiples that were a little bit unrealistic. You're going to see a shift for large asset-based, multi-state operator type companies, specifically the public ones, take on credit and debt. That's where you start to feel like the bigger players are starting to want to find a way into cannabis. But if they feel like the asset value is a little bit heavy, 
for example, retail and cultivation and manufacturing type companies trading at 30 to 50 times revenue multiple <laughs> is probably not what any market in the world allows those types of assets to trade at. You're going to see credit and debt come in. It's healthy for companies, cheaper cost to capital. It's non-dilutive. I think the markets will respond favoritively to it. In reality, what's happening is these companies are not going to be able to not hit return numbers, not generate the revenue that they're expected, and that could cause some correction. Yeah. And so we think there's a debt and credit opportunity that we're in short order going to be able to announce some things we're going to have as a partnership on that side. But Arcadian at its core will still focus on equity and growth round investing. Something you said triggered a thought. It, it has a lot to do with how to invest in this industry or what to look for in this industry. And I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people reach out to me on a daily basis and say, what company should I invest in? I basically tell everybody the same thing. Cannabis is a whole nother animal. It's changing so fast that unless you're at every event and you have a network of cannabis companies that you're talking to, you're basically blind. I know that's one thing about your company that you and your team are so ingrained in the cannabis community. It's important to explain to people why that makes a difference when it comes to investing in cannabis. We need to work together. At macro level, this industry is going to continue to grow by volumes that are rarely seen in human history. Real assets, real cash flow, going to touch everybody and it's going to continue to grow. But at its micro level, who's going to be a part of that growth and who's going to do it right during that journey? One thing that you said to me the last time we spoke is that you get invited into a, almost every big deal. You have such a good reputation within the investment community that most of the time, the other investors will invite you in on the deals. And I suspect that has a lot to do with your approach to this and your willingness to bring others into your deals. And I, I mean, I think it makes such a big difference. It makes a difference. And I think we're just scratching the surface with the kind of difference that approach makes because up until recently and even today, capital has been the number one driving factor for a company to take on investors' capital. My hope and belief is that this industry continues to grow into a place where it has lots of capital options. And if you are a great company doing great things, I hope you can be selective. Mm -hmm. I hope you get to choose who you want on your cap table. And when that day comes and it's not just about money, it's about how this particular investor group allows for me to succeed, encourages my growth, is there for me when times are tough. And I think right now we're really seeing that be the case. Well, you mentioned a minute ago that you are starting the next fund, which is going to be a not plant touching fund. And I, and I know you have a lot of other things in the works. Maybe you can give us a peek at some of the things that you're working on right now. One of them is preaching a collaborative message. I mean, personally, I think the industry has given us so much already and feel very good about our future as an asset management firm. We, we brought a new partner in from Goldman and Guggenheim, who we think is going to help drive our impact investing, both in terms of the way we think about Arcadian and the way we want to hold our portfolio companies accountable in a socially equitable, environmentally equitable impact way. So that's really important to mm -hmm. us. Number two, we are building out new funds. We're very excited about the second wave going through North America on the B2B side of the industry in short term, probably year and a half. I think we start to see real big transactions and flow there. We're really excited about the future of the B2C side. That's why we're building out the plant touching fund. It's really focused on the consumer delivery, distribution, branding, medical, testing, IP, so many wonderful things to do on that side. It feels like you're just trying to build Apple and you have all this technology, but <laughs> How are you going to put it together for the consumer? And we're still at a day where no brands have won anything for the most part. So yeah. really excited about the future there. And we are also going to announce some things we're doing on the credit and debt side at some point in time that I think are beneficial to our LP base. And so we, we like all three in North America and other markets in the world. A couple of investments in Asia that we're really, really excited about for what those could be one day working on things in Latin America, some opportunities in Africa that are really interesting, and of course, Europe. That's exciting stuff, Matt. As always, it's, it's fun to speak to you. And if you're a company that's looking for growth funding or you're an investor 
looking for a company to manage your cannabis investments, you really should check out the Arcadian Fund. We'll have all of Matt's contact information on the MJ Bulls website. And Matt, it's always great to have you on the show. And hopefully you'll be available to come back on again soon. Dan, yeah, I think there's nothing more important than transparency, having these types of conversations in the industry, education and understanding the most important aspect of everything we're trying to all do today. So encouraged by you guys' work, man. Love to be a part of it anytime. It's always good to have you, Matt. Thanks again for doing this and keep it going. My name is Kira Reed, and I'd like to invite you to be inspired by the women who are leading in the cannabis industry. Each week, we will discuss empowerment, leadership, and what it means to be a woman in charge in marijuana, hemp, and CBD. As the founder of the Women Empowered in Cannabis community, I have had the great pleasure to get to know many brilliant and talented women who are CEOs, executives, politicians, advocates, and community leaders that are focused on creating a cannabis economy that is just, fair, and equal. We'll learn how these women make decisions, how they navigate a predominantly male industry, and what they're doing to level the playing field for women. I hope you'll join us.